Hark the herald angels singing glory to the newborn king. Oh, hey, good to see you guys. So this is not the official start of our service. This is the pre-start. However, let me wish you a very Merry Christmas. Okay, why are we doing this pre-video? Because we have a contest this year. During the service, I'm going to show you a video like this. Jingle cat, jingle cat. Did you see that video? It has a cat in it, a jingle cat. So every time you see a video with a jingle cat in it, mark it on a piece of paper or mark it in your head. And then at the end of this service, send an email to the email listed in the description section of this YouTube video. Send an email with the number of jingle cats you spotted. And then we will enter you into a contest where you may win a valuable prize. Now it's probably not gonna be valuable at all, but a couple of you will get a prize and the rest of you will get to send me an email telling me how many Jingle Cats you saw. That seems like a worthy exercise, doesn't it? Yes, it does, Pastor Doug. Okay, so let's start this service. I wish you a very Merry Christmas. I love you dearly, but that's still unofficial until we start the service, so here we go. Hey everybody from the Barons family. Hi. Welcome to our Candlelight Christmas Service 2020 Online Edition. We want to welcome you this evening, and we want to kick off our time together. We want to start by lighting the final candle of our Advent wreath, the center candle, or the Christ candle, which represents Christ as the centerpiece of our faith. And now, Kate's going to read a scripture verse that fits so well with this greeting. Then the angel said, Don't be afraid. I will bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in a cloth, lying in a manger. Why is a baby? Excellent Why? reading, Kate. Why? Make room for the Lord this evening and enjoy our service. Bye. 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 <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Oh, oh, oh. Little do you know, this is take two. <laughs> <laughs> so we are here with you Christmas Eve, although it's not quite Christmas Eve yet for us, but we are just so excited to put together um, uh, the start of the Christmas Eve service. And I know that Pastor Doug has a lot planned for us tonight, and I just, I'm just excited to be with uh, the church family and to be able to um, uh, celebrate uh, Christ's birth with you and the preparation for Christmas Day. We're also happy we have uh, Joshua and Taylor who have joined us and uh, they were able to do this safely by uh, quarantining for a while before coming home. Um, we've taken COVID very seriously as a family and we've attempted to bubble as much as we can to make sure we limit outside exposures and Josh and Taylor took very safe precautions before coming home. So we're so happy that they could do that and make that possible and could be with us to celebrate uh, Christmas with us. And um, I'm sure Joe and Maria are joining us from Boston, um, as um, many of you are joining us from various parts of Washington State. And we're just so happy you're here. So God, we give you this Christmas Eve service and we ask for your will to be done. Inhabit our... Um, our Christmas carols in the in the same way you inhabit our Sunday morning praise. May these words be give you glory and uh, give you honor. In your name we pray. Amen.
Bleak and cold was the night that chilled. Ignited and warm were the souls filled with expectancy for the love to come, love to which hearts succumb. Fragile shoulders will burdens bear, small hands will hold the world's despair. Tiny feet will print our journey's way. Alleluia for this day. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born upon this day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father a blessed angel came and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. How that in Bethlehem the Son of God was born by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. But when to Bethlehem they came where at this infant lay, they found him in a manger where oxen feed on hay. His mother Mary kneeling down to the Lord did pray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place. And with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas, all other doth deface. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now it's time for that most sacred of traditions, the singing of jingle bells. So get your car keys out, or get some bells out, or find something that jingles, and sing along with us. Hi, Doug. Jeez. <laughs> Cut that out. Uh, right? You can edit that part out. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Green family. Matthew and I are going to lead you in What Child Is This? But before we start to sing, I would like to read a poem of meditation by um, a lyricist, poet, author, and teacher. Her name is Devondra Banks, and the poem is called Prayer and Meditation. Hear me 
now, O wondrous counselor, mend my thoughts to think on thee. When I'm troubled, calm the waters. Where I wade, Lord, make still the sea. With your hand of healing virtue, heal my wounds and cease the pain. When my flesh infects my spirit, cleanse and make it whole again. Breathe the breath of life eternal. Blow the winds of overflow. Shower drops of fresh anointing, and I will speak the truth I know. You have heard me. You have touched me. As a witness, I confess. You have spared me from the enemy. In your name, I'll forever bless. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping? This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him loud, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, compassion. Christmas. Merry Christmas. I expected you to be ho, 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 Merry. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. Okay, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> Eat, Papa. Christmas is coming. Uh, so how do you like the service so far? It is wonderful. Right. And uh, the Jingle Cats, is that too much? I, I'm i loving the Jingle Cats. Mm -hmm. my, my only concern is that it might be a little distracting at I times. I promise I will not distract the service with Jingle Cats. Um, why did you just...
just pause? Uh, I, I don't know why. So let's go on. Um, I am so glad you guys are taking this time to be with us on Christmas Eve. Or if you watched it a little later, we're still glad you're watching this. And we're just going to give a short message here. And what we do on Christmas Eve is try to make the message approachable to everyone, not just the adults, but the kids as well. Uh, because I think you know there's a little bit of kid in us as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to... <laughs> We're going to do that, but not now. Not now. We're going uh, to actually read some scripture. So, uh, Jen, why don't you read this, and then we'll uh, give a little message. All right. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins." Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave, gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Thanks, honey. Amen. Okay, so you guys know that I enjoy uh, manger, manger scenes. Uh, and uh, sometimes we've done skits in the church where we've had people play different animals. Mm -hmm. uh, my favorite year was once I gave everybody a, a, a piece of paper and they were supposed to act out a, a, a character in the manger scene, but they didn't know what each other was acting out. Mm -hmm. And they were just supposed to all do it at once. Well, I gave them all the same name. I gave them baby <laughs> Jesus. So we saw these people attacking each other to be baby Jesus in the middle, but I'm not going to do that this year. Mm -hmm. But uh, what are some of the, you know, the, the main characters that you mm -hmm. see in every manger set, uh, at least the non-minimalist ones? Um, for instance, we got, well, we got wise men here, yeah, there's right? A wise man. Yeah. There's one. I don't know why he's carrying a suitcase here. There's another one. I don't know what that is, but I guess they traveled a long distance. So I That's think there's... That's where he carries all his Franken... Oh, I think he's oh, got wait. gold or myrrh, or I don't know what he has in there. Yeah. We have another one that just... He's a three king, clearly. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what he's doing, yeah. but just bragging, basically. But he's there. We've got Shepherd. Shepherd. That kind of looks like a, a vagrant shepherd. Uh, he's got a Hello. little he had to travel far <laughs> there we go and uh there's always cattle mm -hmm. a lane and donkeys if you've seen the rankin bass special there's francis the long-eared donkey that's not biblically correct but there's a donkey and someone obviously came on a camel that's right we got a camel and uh someone put this in our manger scene it looks like a dinosaur that is not accurate. So they were no not accurate. Dinosaurs there. A little lamb. Oh, here there's, we go. There's the big lamb. And a big lamb. There's the big lamb. Oh, uh, perspective wise, this is the big one. <laughs> Ooh, okay. And we just read about the angel. That's right. Oh, that's a tiny angel. This is a tiny I don't know what angel. That is with a big wand. I don't yeah. know if angels have wands, but this one does. <laughs> Uh, and then, so we get, let's get to the main characters Did you get here. Mary already? We've got, let's first do Joseph. There's Joseph. Joseph is always kind of, he's just the guy next to Mary, mm -hmm. right? We're like, I don't know, he's just the guy there. And then, of course, we have Mary. And there's baby Jesus. And there's baby Jesus. In this set, yes. baby Jesus looks rather old. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not accurate as well. So there we go. Those are in the manger scene, and we all set up something. And of course, yes, the three wise men, or there's more than three, and they weren't mm -hmm. there at the time, and all that. We've gone over that. But what I've been thinking about mm -hmm. uh, this season is the fact that we often even preach about this and celebrate. We tell all the stories, mm -hmm. and the Bible tells the stories. We talk about the shepherds, and we we gave a message on the shepherds, and we give a me message on the wise men, and. Uh, message on Joseph and 
we, we spend all this time looking at everyone who came to the manger scene. But mm -hmm. one thing that stuck with me this year is that they all went home. Mm -hmm. They came, they, there was an event, the shepherds, you know, this great event, mm -hmm. and then they went home. Uh, the wise men came and then they went back to their lives, a different route for them. But mm -hmm. still, uh, life went on. But the one person where they didn't go home in the context of honoring Jesus or being with Jesus, being with Emmanuel, is Mary. Mm. Uh, Mary doesn't just go to experience Emmanuel. Her journey isn't a visitation. Even the angels, there's an angelic visitation. Mm -hmm. And then the angel goes home. But Mary, she stays with Emmanuel, or Emmanuel mm -hmm. stays with her. And that yeah. has just really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. uh, from conception, yeah. Emmanuel is with Mary, and Mary is with Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And just continually, even after the great visitations, there's Mary pregnant with the Savior, with yeah. Emmanuel. Even after everybody comes and visits, and, and you know, even think of this reality, after everyone goes away, Joseph's got to find a way to make some money, has to find a way to survive, so, or, or even to take the gifts that the wise men gave and find a way to trade those in for some, some valuable currency there. And uh, there's Mary, mm -hmm. alone with Jesus. Yeah. And uh, this, this comforts me. Mary's story comforts me. And I think sometimes Protestants have downplayed Mary because they get nervous about how Catholics have lifted up Mary. And because of that concern, I don't think we always mm -hmm. honor Mary the way we should. And I think it's also because there's some misogyny in the Protestant church where sometimes women have had a low, that we've had a low view of women as preachers and teachers and those sorts of things. But Mary is greatly blessed and highly lifted up. She is someone who really did something that none of us will really be mm -hmm. able to understand. But Mary, in many ways, is our model for how faith with Emmanuel happens. It's not an event, mm -hmm. although there are events. It's an everyday, every moment, every season relationship. God with us. As you say that, it just makes me think of how many nights she would have laid there with Jesus just right against her, right at her side, yeah. just as close as he could possibly be how many nights, how many days he was a constant presence with her and she was a constant presence with him. We even know, uh, we don't know much about what was going on with Mary once Jesus started ministering when he was in his mm -hmm. early 30s, but Joseph is not mentioned, which probably means that Joseph died. And so even there, Mary raises this son and he becomes a man and then Jesus starts this journey and Mary is holding her boy close to her heart, processing mm -hmm. everything that's happening in a very different way than many of us would process. Yeah. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, this makes me think of another memory that's a little less distant, not 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. But every Christmas Eve, this is a memory I have as well, most Christmas Eves, is uh, we'll come and set up and the worship teams there, Christian and Joel and her family on Christmas Eve are setting up music. And that's always an amazing thing. And I'm always so honored that they're doing that. And sometimes I come before them, sometimes I come after them, but we're the first ones there and Pastor Dan and others show up. Uh, and then we have a service and people mm -hmm. come through the doors and we hug you. And yes, we're missing that to hug and to love each other and mm -hmm. to show kindness. And, and then uh, the service is over. And slowly, or sometimes quickly, depending mm -hmm. upon if you have an event to go to or how long I preached, mm -hmm. uh, people leave. Yeah. And eventually, uh, even I'll send home Pastor Dan and Christine and Joel and the worship team after they got everything taken down, mm -hmm. they go. And then it's just me. I'll send Jen home with the kids because usually we take two cars because I come early. And then I'm alone in that building. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, that building doesn't even exist yeah, now. Yeah. It's just a parking lot. But it's been different buildings. And I exist there alone. And I'll tell you, sometimes I get sad. It's just you've had a high and excitement, mm -hmm. and then you're alone. But it's in those moments I realize I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. It's in those moments I find my 24-hour-a-day Jesus. 
my Emmanuel who is always with me. Amen. That's where my faith abides in its strength. Mm -hmm. It's good for me to be in community. It's good for me to be in relationship, mm -hmm. but no one can be there all the time, right? No one. Yeah. Sometimes we have this illusion. Well, if I just had, you know, more people around me, more friends, more relationships, more significant others, that it would help me with those moments of really feeling alone. And although I do believe community helps us, mm -hmm. it does not supplant or replace mm -hmm. our need to be with our Savior. Amen. And it doesn't keep us from having those moments where we're alone. Even those times, I think sometimes I feel the most alone when I'm actually surrounded by people. And I realize that that's not enough. Even, you know, when I'm with myself, my own thoughts, my own anxieties, my own fears, and I realize how alone I am, but then I'm not. And that's a great point. Some of you, your memories might be that as well, going to Christmas events, even Christmas Eve services, and just feeling disconnected and in the group, but not connected and feeling alone or being with family and extended family or friends, and still feeling that you're just not in it with everyone else, mm -hmm. or they aren't truly with you. And it's not even an accusation, it's just how you feel. The good news is that Christ came so that we could experience mm. Emmanuel, Amen. God with us. Yeah. Uh, we get to experience that kind of relationship that Mary experienced. And I like it with Mary because in the beginning for Mary, it's much more about her caring for Jesus than Jesus caring for her. And that's an aspect of our faith that although God cares for us, we also are called to care for our faith mm -hmm. and to cherish our faith and to hold our faith close to our hearts. When I think about the word, when it says, and Mary treasured these things up in her heart, that that's something that she did with, you know, the, the news that she would bear Jesus. But that's also, I think uh, it's a message for all of us, even today to treasure that faith, treasure, treasure that knowledge, treasure that relationship that we have with the Lord to truly treasure that up in our hearts. So I wrote a little poem, if you could get that over there, uh, about Mary and uh, her faith and uh, her journey. And so I want to read this to you in this low light, if I can. Excuse me. <clears throat> Got to have my official voice to read the poem. <clears throat> I entitled this Mary's Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. There were, excuse me, it's Let's my own over. poem and I can't <laughs> read it. <clears throat> you were surrounded by visitors and visitations. They brought you news and celebration, but each one went home. They all left you, but Emmanuel stayed. Angels proclaimed you highly favored. Shepherds confirmed you were blessed, but each one parted leaving you alone, but Emmanuel stayed. A star above your head led wise men to your door. Each visitor confessed you mother of our Lord, but they all went away, their confessions just an echo, but Emmanuel stayed. And Joseph beside you was simply not enough not always present when you needed love. You spent hours alone with no companion by your side, but Emmanuel stayed. Emmanuel, God with us, God with us, but first with you, from your womb to your arms, from your heart to the cross, sacred gift entrusted to your care forever present, never leaving, always there. Emmanuel, God with us, Mary, you gave your blessed all. Let us hold our Savior close. Let us follow your sacred call. Let us embrace our loving Savior. Others leave, but he will stay. Emmanuel. Amen. Thank you, honey. That was beautiful. I want, I want you to know that Emmanuel is with us. Mm -hmm. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. His arms are mm -hmm. open. Amen. 
His arms are open to give you love, to give you hope, to give you grace, mm. to give you forgiveness, to give you life, to give you light. And when others leave, or even when you feel like you've left your own body, like, I just don't know who I am and what I'm doing. Christ stays with you, Emmanuel. That's our hope this Christmas. Whether we can be together or not, Emmanuel is with us. Father God, I pray that you would give each person a sense of your presence. Mm. Jesus Christ, we need your presence in our life. Holy Spirit, reveal to us the love of the Father and the Son and you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. May we know that we abide in your presence mm -hmm. and you abide with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Lord. Okay, now we're going to do a candle lighting service. Uh, if you have a candle, uh, then we want you to light yours as well. If you don't, that's okay. We're going to light candles. I think what we're going to do this year is we're going to start with Jada. And Jada can start the lighting. Mm -hmm. And then we will go, I think we'll go, then the Barons will light. And then we will light. And then I'm going to hold out my candle for you. And then you guys can light your candle. And then we will all sing together as one congregation. Amen. All right, Jada, why don't you take it away? Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas! Yeah.
That is our service. Make sure you blow out your candles and don't drip wax all over the place. And send us the total of how many jingle cats you saw. Remember, jingle cats. And send it to the email listed right here. And we'll pick uh, one or two random winners to send you a little prize. It won't be that valuable, but it'll be kind of fun. So email us how many jingle cats you saw. And a very Merry Christmas to each one of you.